Global Dialogues asks young people to write narratives based on issues that they face. And often these issues uh, are uh, taboo subjects, such as gender identity, HIV, AIDS, um, sexual abuse, things like that. Uh, the narratives will take place in the different stations around the room. There is going to be uh, a pause in between each of the narratives. And during that time, what we hope is that you engage each other in conversations about what you've just heard. Also, feel free to come up here. Uh, we have an audio installation of uh, Global Dialogues entry, and we also have a video uh, installation of one. And these artworks were entries that were submitted by young people in our community to the uh, Global Dialogues contest last year. what you will, that you were provoked, that I was asking for it, that, that it's okay. Just know one thing. Neither I nor any other woman asked, asked for, for it. it. The next two and a half years were pure torture. We were abused physically, mentally, sexually, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. We were beaten and raped. As a victim, I can tell you that it does exist. As survivors, we want to tell people that although some folks might think the story's too graphic, to us, it was a reality. Please, speak up against domestic violence and violence against women and children. You can make a difference. Well, one of the things I've actually been thinking about this last year is how important it is to speak up, not just to sit back and not just to sort of let some things slide. I started the final steps of our relationship. It wasn't until that night when I was looking at divorce papers online that it finally clicked within his brain. You are my fucking wife, he yelled. We are in this together. No, I'm done, I yelled back. I debated my options, continue this life or die, and I chose that I would rather die. Crowbar at my throat and said, I'm done. He grimaced at me and walked away. It wasn't until the next day that he finally left, and I've never felt such freedom before. Um, sharing it in front of everybody was very nerve-wracking, um, <laughs> but it it felt good because people people need to know is really what it comes down to, and it was it was very hard for me. But once you start doing it and talking about it more, it it makes you feel better, and like I said, it tells other people about it so that maybe they will come forward and tell their story. I started buying pills on the street. Like most people, I eventually hit rock bottom, and I hit it hard. They took me to a rehab facility. Oh, that first month and a half, I wanted to quit. But I knew this was the better thing for my son. Before I knew you, all I could see was black and white. You brought color and excitement to my life. I need that feeling need that again. again. I still think about you. All the time. All the time. Crystal. Really, I liked a lot of them. They all meant something new, something that inspired more, but from their experiences moved and inspired more people to move on. I really was a female stuck in a man's body. But I didn't care what they thought. It wasn't up to them. I knew I was a boy with a girl's name, but who were they to judge? I was everything that I could have ever dreamed about when I was younger. I was a wife, a mom, a lover, and most importantly, I was a woman. I was me. 
So any ideas people have at this point about what we can do as individuals or what we can do as a community, I would love to hear them. Or if you just want to write them on the table here, that would be fantastic. Whether it's a blog, whether it's a video, whether it's a poem, just to share. And it doesn't have to be anything official like this. It can just be something they share with their friends. But the importance of sharing who we are and stories of challenge, but also stories of, of resilience.